In this video, I will show you how to use Hall Effect sensors with an Arduino. These are sensors that can measure the strength of a magnetic field. Unlike the Reed switch, a type of magnetically activated switch that I cover in the previous video in our Arduino tutorial series linked in the description, Hall Effect sensors allow you to measure the strength of the magnetic field and not just whether or not a magnet is nearby. In this video, I'll be covering two different types of Hall Effect sensors, analog and digital, but note that they look pretty much identical, and the writing on the package is very tiny and can be very difficult to read even with a magnifying glass, so it is important to keep track of which type you buy, and if you buy both types, keep them in separate labeled containers so you don't get them mixed up. I will be using analog sensor part number A1302 and digital sensor part number A3144, so if you are using different sensors, you will need to double check the data sheets for your sensor, for example, to see if the pinouts are different, but the concepts in this video should in general apply to both types of analog and digital Hall effect sensors. I'm going to hook up a multimeter so we can look at the difference in behavior between the analog and digital sensors. First, I have the multimeter connected to the output of the digital Hall effect sensor. And we can see that by default, when no magnet is near the sensor, the output goes high or close to 5 volts. You might see it fluctuate a bit as I move things around and bump wires here, but when everything is steady, that value is pretty close to 5 volts. Then we will see that if I take my bar magnet and slowly start to bring it towards the sensor, once I reach a certain point or a certain threshold, that voltage is going to drop all the way to zero, and I have my Arduino code set to turn the LED on. As I back the bar magnet away, once I reach a certain point, the LED is going to turn off, and the voltage is going to go back up to 5. Now, you might have noticed something interesting there. It looks like I had to get pretty close for the LED to turn on, and then the LED doesn't turn off again right when I cross that threshold. It actually stays on longer until I get a little farther away. And we will talk about that a little more later when we look at the data sheet for this sensor, but it has two different thresholds set, an activation threshold for the output to switch, and then a deactivation or turn off threshold where the output changes again, and those two thresholds are different. So I don't get the LED to go on and off when I just go back and forth past this one point. It won't go off again until I get a little farther away. Also, note that this video is not a physics lesson on magnetic fields, but a quick reminder, magnetic fields have a direction to them, so you can imagine invisible magnetic field lines wrapping around in space from the north pole to the south pole of this magnet, and that direction affects the sensor. So we see that the digital sensor over on the left here is activated when I bring the south pole towards the front. Ignore the analog sensor over on the right, I just happen to be getting close enough sometimes to trigger that one too, but the digital sensor is not changing the output if I bring the north pole close to the front face of the sensor. However, if I switch around and go over to the back of the sensor, we see the behavior is reversed. The output does not toggle if I bring the south pole near the back of the sensor, but the output does change from high to low if I bring the north pole towards the back of the sensor. So again, the polarity of your magnet or which pole you bring towards which side of the sensor is going to determine whether or not the output changes. Again, and for this particular sensor, it works with the south pole on the front side and the north pole on the back side. Switching the multimeter over to the analog sensor, we see that the behavior is a little different. When there is no magnet nearby, the output voltage is centered at roughly half the supply voltage. So the Arduino provides about 5 volts and my output voltage is pretty close to about half that of 2.5 volts, I'm getting 2.45. And then if I slowly bring the south pole of the magnet close to the sensor, we will see that voltage start to climb. And if I switch it around and slowly bring the north pole of the magnet close to the sensor, we will see that voltage start to go down. So here, since we have an analog output, so it's giving us a more continuous change instead of just going on and off, this is where you can set up something where you have calibrated it to use this as a distance sensor. So for a fixed magnet of certain strength, you can create a calibration curve if to know how far away the magnet is based on the voltage reading you're getting, 
or if the magnet is at a fixed distance, you can use it to measure the magnetic field strength of the magnet. So if you have different magnets and you want to compare their strength, you can put them all at the same distance from the Hall effect sensor, measure the voltage, and then using some information from the data sheet, you can convert that to magnetic field strength. We will go over that in a little bit when we look at the data sheets for these sensors. So to recap, we have two different types of Hall effect sensors here, and the underlying concept is similar, but the behavior of the output is different. For the digital sensor, we have a threshold at which it will be activated for a certain magnetic field strength, and then a threshold at which it will turn back off, and the output, which I didn't have the multimeter connected to show there, but remember that only ever goes between high and low. And then for the analog sensor, you have an output that starts out centered, and goes up or down depending on the strength and direction of the magnetic field as it approaches the sensor. So two different outputs that you can read with your Arduino, as we'll see when we look at the code, using either the digital read or the analog read commands. Which one you want is going to depend on what you need to do for your project. Zooming in to take a look at the breadboard and wiring these, and for now I have taken out the LEDs just for clarity to remove some clutter both of these sensors have three pins, and looking at them from the front, that is the side with the writing on it, which you can't probably really see very well in this video. Or if you look at them from the top, you see they have these tapered edges, so the front side is actually a little smaller. That is the front. Going from left to right, pins one, two, and three are power, ground, and signal out. So that is five volts from the Arduino, ground, and then your signal out, which is going to go to one of your Arduino pins. Again, remember that I am specifically talking about digital sensor A3144 and analog sensor A1302. In this video, if you have different sensors, you need to check their data sheets to get the pinouts because they might not be in the same order as what I have here. The other thing is that for the digital sensor, it requires an external pull-up resistor on the output pin, so I have a 10 kilo ohm resistor going from the output pin up to 5 volts on the Arduino. I then have jumper wires connected over to the Arduino. For the digital sensor, it is going to one of the digital pins, and for the analog sensor, it is going over to one of the analog input pins. Now that we have seen how to wire these, let's switch over to the computer and take a look at the data sheets and the code. Let's first take a look at the data sheet for the digital sensor. Now, if you have never looked at the data sheet for an electronic part before, don't worry because these can contain an overwhelming amount of information, but if you are just doing an Arduino project and following an Arduino tutorial like this video, you don't really need to read the entire data sheet. The major thing you want to look for is the pinout diagram, which should look something like this. So there is a caption clarifying which side of the device you are looking at. This is viewed from the branded side or the side with the writing on it. And then again, from left to right, we have pins one, two, and three, supply, ground, and output. That is specific to this part. If you bought a different part number, you need to find the data sheet and double check the pinout. You can usually find the data sheet linked from wherever you bought the part online, or if it's not there, by Googling the part number and the words data sheet. If you keep going in the data sheet, you can find some other useful information. For example, this lists the supply voltage range that you can use to operate the sensor. So we're using an Arduino, which is five volts that falls well within this range. But if for some reason you needed to power the sensor from a different voltage or you were doing a different non-Arduino project that had a different voltage supply, this tells you the voltage range that will work with the sensor. We also have the magnetic characteristics of the sensor in units of Gauss, which again, I'm not really going over a magnetism tutorial in this video, but I mentioned earlier that there are different thresholds. So look at the little footnote here, BOP or operate point is the magnetic field at which the output will turn on. And then BRP is release point at which the output will turn off. And there are different sensor model numbers here, but for each sensor, those values are different. So it's not just a single threshold that toggles the output. There's one threshold that turns the output on and then a different threshold that turns the output off, which is why earlier in the video, you saw that the LED would turn on when I brought the magnet close, but then it would stay on longer as I brought the magnet farther away because of those two different thresholds. 
Now for an Arduino project where you just want to detect if a magnet is near the sensor, then you probably don't care about the exact strength of the magnetic field. But if for some reason you do need that information, it is here in the data sheet and it would allow you to select which type of the sensor or which model number you want to buy, depending on the magnetic field strength range that you need. Switching over to the datasheet for the analog Hall effect sensor, we see that this one has a lot of similar information, but is arranged differently. So depending on the manufacturer, you might have to scroll to a different point in the datasheet to find what you are looking for. In this case, again, the first thing we are going for is the pinout diagram. Make sure you look at the one for the package type that you have. So we have the through hole package, which has these pins that go into the breadboard that is different from the surface mount package, which is designed to go flat on top of a printed circuit board. So here, rather than having the labels directly on the diagram, we have a table where we wanna make sure we're looking at the right column. So it's calling the package we have here UA. And be careful because the pins are listed out of order here. It goes one, three, two. So pin one is the power supply. So that's pin one on the left here. Pin two, which is the third row in the table, but the second pin on the part is ground. And then pin three is the output. So again, depending on the data sheet, there might be multiple packages in some table like this where you need to look up the correct row for the pins on your package and make sure you do not get the order mixed up. If you go farther down in the data sheet, you will again see a ton of information, which can be a little overwhelming, but for most Arduino projects, you do not need a lot of this. One of the big ones to look for again is the supply voltage, which we see for this sensor has a smaller range than the digital sensor. This is only 4.5 to 6 volts, but the Arduino's 5 volts does fall in that range, so it's fine to power one of these from an Arduino. The other big one to look for under magnetic characteristics for the analog sensor is the magnetic sensitivity. This tells you how much the output voltage is going to change per unit change in the magnetic magnetic field strength. So we see that depending on the sensor model number that is different. It is either nominally 2.5 millivolts per gauss or 1.3 millivolts per gauss. That is a typical rating. If you look up at the columns here, that gives you a minimum, typical, and maximum value. So for each individual sensor, depending on some manufacturing variability, that value can actually change and you would need to calibrate the sensor you have. This millivolts per Gauss unit, again, means how much does the output voltage change? So remember when we had our multimeter earlier in the video, the output voltage was starting at about 2.5 volts, but then it was changing as I brought the magnet closer. And that amount of change depends on this value and the magnetic field strength. So if the magnetic field strength changes by one gauss, I would expect a change in the output voltage of 2.5 volts for this sensor. If it changes by two gauss, I would expect a change in the output voltage of two, of, sorry, five millivolts for this sensor and so on. If you just want to detect if a magnet is present near the sensor, then you don't need this information. But if you want to convert your voltage to an actual magnetic field strength in Gauss, then that is how you do it. Finally, let's take a look at the code, which I have in a single program for both the analog and digital sensors here. So going through this from top to bottom. To set up the digital sensor, I declare a variable for the pin I will have it connected to. I also declare a variable for the pin I'll have a corresponding LED connected to, and I declare a variable for the sensor reading. I then do the same thing for the analog sensor, but in this case, the pin is one of the analog pins, A0. I have an LED, and I have a variable for the sensor value. In my setup function, I then use the pin mode command to set appropriate pins as inputs or outputs. So I set the digital input pin for the digital sensor as an input, I set the two LED pins as outputs, and I do not need to use the pin mode command for the analog read pin, so that is not there. Then I initialize serial communication so I can print my sensor values out to the serial monitor when I'm testing my program. In my loop function, I use the digital read command to read the state of the digital sensor pin, and I use the analog read command to read the analog value from the analog sensor pin. 
I then print out the digital and analog sensor values to the serial monitor, which I will demonstrate in a minute and I'm going to use those values to control the two LEDs, and I do that in two different ways. For the digital sensor, this is very similar to what you would use if you were just using a button. I use an if-else statement, so if the sensor output is high, remember that means a magnet is not near the sensor, then I'm going to turn the LED off or set it low, else meaning the sensor value is low, which means there is a magnet near the sensor, then I'm going to set the LED high. The analog sensor works a little differently. If you've worked with analog inputs before, and if not, you can check out our potentiometer tutorial back towards the beginning of our Arduino tutorial series linked in the description of this one. If you have looked at that, you'll remember that the analog read command will return a value between 0 and 1023, where 0 corresponds to zero volts and 1023 corresponds to five volts. So this analog value is not just going to be high or low, it's going to be some number between zero and 1023. And remember that in my default state with no magnet nearby, I was measuring about two and a half volts or half of my supply voltage. So what I have here is an if statement set up to turn the LED on if the analog value goes outside of a certain range. So if my analog value is greater than 520, or that's what this double vertical bar here means, my analog value is less than 490, then I am going to turn my LED on. If my analog value is between those two numbers, then the LED is going to stay off. So this if statement is a little more complicated than what you may be used to doing if you're just using digital inputs with high and low. But again, what I'm doing here is keeping the LED off as long as my analog output is centered, and then I'm turning the LED on the moment it gets above or below a certain value. So it's going to turn the LED on whether I bring the north pole of a magnet close or the south pole of a magnet close. Remember earlier in the video how we saw how the voltage went up or down depending on which pole of the magnet we brought close to the sensor. This is where the serial monitor is useful for calibrating your sensor and setting this range. So I have opened up my serial monitor here and it is printing out both the digital and analog values. So right now I have no magnets near either one of the sensors and you see the digital value is one or high and the analog value has a little bit of noise but it's bouncing around a value of about 509 or 510. If I take the south pole of a magnet and bring it near the digital sensor. We will see that switches low or to zero, and we'll see that if I move it over a little closer to the analog sensor, the analog value has gone up to about 520, 530. I'm gonna take that away again, flip it around and do the north pole, and remember that the north pole was not having an effect when I bring it towards the front of the digital sensor, which is what I'm doing now. That's staying high, but we can see when the north pole gets near the front of the analog sensor that this reading is going down to around 490. So this is going to vary depending on the strength of your magnet and how close you bring it to the sensor, but you can use that calibration procedure to decide what variables or what values you want for your ranges here to cause your analog sensor to do something. Of course, controlling LEDs is just one example of what you can do with these sensors. Once you know how to set these sensors up and take readings from them, you could use them to control other outputs like buzzers or motors. You can check out tutorials for different output options in our Arduino playlist linked in the description of this video. Finally, I have been demonstrating with a bar magnet just for clarity in this video, but you should be able to use many other types of magnets with these sensors. For example, here I have a magnetic pet collar tag where the polarity is not really obvious. It's not marked anywhere on the tag, but you can see that it will still activate the sensors if I bring it close enough. So if you wanted to build something like an automatic pet door or a tracker to detect when your pet gets close to something, or goes in and out of a certain opening, you could use this type of sensor to detect the presence of one of these magnetic tags. For more Arduino tutorials, science projects you can do with an Arduino, and over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out the links in the description and visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.